welcome back to my channel. It is Friday and I am so excited. Yes, indeedy I am. I hope that you are having a good day thus far, whatever time or whatever day really that you are watching and viewing this video. Now, as you can see from the thumbnail and the title, we are going to be talking about RHOC, Bravo's ARHOC that is, season 18, episode one, recap and review. Yes, 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 yes. And I'm actually excited about this one. Now, I have not recapped and reviewed uh, Real Housewives of Orange County before. I don't think I've even made much reference to it. Um, but I had a bit of an inkling that this was going to probably be a really good season. I don't know about you, but I just felt that way. So I actually did a video yesterday. If you hadn't gotten a chance to uh, take a peruse to that video after you're done with this recap review video, We'll go ahead and check it out. It gave a nice little opening to some of the things that we were going to see within the season and for certainly what was going to open up with the season. I also gave a little bit of background for Katie, who's the new housewife. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed doing that video because it really got me excited about some of the storylines that were going to take place because it felt like it was very authentic this season. You know, it didn't feel like the normal contrived type of storylines, at least at the moment. You know, we've had a couple of things that we are dealing with at this point, one of them being the DUI that Shannon had received just days after it turns out the reunion. And that's what I had thought at first that, that had happened before, but here it is. And I think I got that right for the last video. The reunion for last season, season 17, took place first. But by the time we got to see the reunion, the whole situation had already unfolded with the DUI. So that being said, you know, it was one of those things that it was literally 10 days after the taping of the reunion. And that is when we hear about the DUI. So, yeah, it was pretty, pretty crazy. Interesting way to start off, but they did it. And um, I was I was here for it. I mean, I was it was quite riveting to me. And uh, yeah, I am glad that I tuned in. Did you tune in? If you did, drop that down in the comment section. If you plan on watching the season but hadn't gotten a chance to yet, let me know down below as well. I do plan on recapping and reviewing each one of the episodes. As long as it's interesting, I will find something to talk about for it and bring it to you and get in conversation with you because I really want to know your thoughts if you are watching it as well. So let's go ahead and get on into it. Now, basically, the episode last night had uh, started off with pretty much a montage montage of different events happening that leads up to the actual viewing of what took place with Shannon's DUI. So we start off with a bit of the clipping of last season's reunion where we see Shannon and Gina going at it. And of course, this was in response to Shannon making some really damning comments in last season as regards to Gina's DUI arrest many years ago. Now at this point, I think we're talking like two, three, four years maybe even ago, you know how these seasons kind of run really fast. And she had made some damning uh, remarks in regards to CPS being possibly involved or being called if Shannon didn't do what she needed to do to help Gina. Because, you know, Shannon's always fancied herself as that person who was kind of always there for people whenever they needed them. And yes, Gina had at times over the last few uh, couple of years in the seasons, subsequently to her uh, DUI, arrest had shared how thankful and grateful she was for the things that Shannon did during that time, because she does acknowledge that Shannon was really a friend to her. And she also acknowledged the fact that, yeah, Shannon's the one that helped her out with getting an attorney and getting that situation squared away. Now, as we all know, Gina has already uh, dealt with the situation. She's been completely transparent about the situation, so we won't go into too much into that because that has been really, really talked about extensively. And now we are focusing on Shannon's situation. And sometimes, you know, we say people shouldn't judge people with glass houses because we all live in them, right? 
it's not really how the saying goes, but it's close enough. <laughs> you get the point. So now here Shannon is at age 59 and I specify the age because she specifies the age in the sense of like, you know, what am I doing? What am I showing? How am I showing and living up at this age doing this kind of thing? And as I shared in my last video, I agree with her because it's, it's just ridiculous, but let's get into it. So, um, yes, they talk about that. They also give us a little bit of what we see conversation with Shannon and the ladies at probably the quiet woman it looks like a um, restaurant where they're basically going back and forth with her about the events because it's a subsequent to that um, we don't get full scenes of it but we do get bits and pieces of what has taken place up until the point of the start of the filming for season 18. So, of course, people are really upset. Tamara is basically, you know, calling her out about her drinking. Um, you know, we see that uh, some of the other ladies are getting ruffled about the situation. Now, one thing about Shannon is that she is being very transparent and she says, look, I am keeping myself up to a certain standard. I know I failed that standard. I don't feel I have a drinking problem. As she shared, she just feels that she had an issue with coping and utilizing drinking with coping with things that she has been dealing with. And we all know that Shannon has had quite a tumultuous, uh, really tenure on Real Housewives of Orange County. She is always undeniably every single season has brought some form of storyline that has been very meaty, riveting, and fully authentic in what was going on her day to day. One thing I don't think you could ever say about Shannon is that she never comes with a storyline or comes up with a contrived storyline because she has nothing else to talk about. She always has something to talk about, whether it was the divorce with David, um, the issues that she's had subsequent from the divorce, you know, the children and things going on there. I mean, she's always had something to bring to the show. And this is why she stays on the show. Now, I've also got my notes here because I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> now, of course, at this point, we're getting to hear a little bit more details as well about what actually took place with the DUI. And Shannon pretty much shares um, in the confessionals as well as when we get to the point where she's talking to her daughters and really looking for, um, in essence, their forgiveness and wanting to apologize for what took place. But she shares with us um, that the details surrounding the DUI is that her and Don Jansen, who was now her ex and now dating Alexis Polino, who's also a new, I won't say cast member yet, but I'm pretty sure this is where she's trying to head for for the third time around. But we'll get into that a little bit later. So basically, uh, she says she went to John Jansen's house. They had a massive fight, massive argument, rather. And he had basically said, you know, that she was a, a drunken idiot. She got upset, decided to pretty much go right outside that car and get into the car. She was very, very angry about what he had said, maybe angry about all the other things that were said. And she decided kind of like, you know, hey, I'll show you kind of thing. She gets into the car and she loses control of the vehicle. She says almost immediately. She did have her pet in the car as well. And she actually hit a uh, side of an apartment building. Now I know that they reference house. I saw a news clip that referenced that it was an apartment building. Neither the late, it was a residential area that she had banged into. I mean, Shannon could have killed herself. She could have killed herself. She could have killed someone else. She could have killed a dog. I mean, it, it really could have been a serious, serious situation. It is a serious, serious situation. Um, and of course, Shannon feels really horrible about that. One of the things that I do appreciate about Shannon is that she basically does specify different times throughout the show. And, and also, if you watch Watch What Happens Live, she's talked about that as well, that, you know, she was so grateful that there was nobody there. That, that you know, honestly, Shannon, to me, even though for all her faults, I do think that there is an empathetic um, element to her. And if she had ever did something to someone, of course, she'd feel horrible about it. But, you know, for a lot of people, that would have been too late, right? You should know better. So at the end of the day, she has definitely has learned her lesson. And thank God no one else had to and be a part of the consequence of her lesson other than herself really at this point and the damage that was done to the apartment building which i'm sure she's working all that stuff out whatever that come me now um as i shared when they were doing the clips in the beginning you know shannon was being challenged by the ladies in regards to that evening and so it was kind of a bit of a pile on but shannon needed to hear it because at the end of the day when shannon feels a certain way about what someone else does within the group she's letting it be known right so she was taking those lumps and i appreciated her for that i appreciate that she wasn't trying to hide from it now you may not have liked all her responses but she definitely made sure she got in there and said look i got to take my lickings so i'm going to take them and she did just that 
Now, we move on a little further and we can see that Shane and Emily um, are actually seem to be doing okay. They seem to be, you know, just as frolicking and loving and dovey and all that stuff um, as they always are, which is nice to see, right? Because Emily um, has, um, I believe she's an attorney and she also does event planning. I don't know if we've seen too much of her event planning over the years that she's been on the show, but we do know that Shane has gotten his um, license now for uh, practicing um, for law as well. So maybe we'll start to see a little bit more of that, but we'll see how that goes. But, you know, of course, we're congratulating him again because I believe that happened last season. And so we may start to see more of that, but it's nice to know that they're still going strong. Then we move over to Heather speaking with her husband and they're talking about the three homes that they have. Now, one thing about Heather, right? Because they call her Fancy Pants, right? Or that's Tamara's nickname for her. If you would recall, uh, Heather Debro is, you know, she is what she is. And I appreciate Heather. And it's actually interesting because she's from the East Coast and yeah, I just, I, I like her. I think she's, she's, she's cool. Um, there might be moments where I may not agree with her on some things that she says or certain things that she does, but overall as an individual cast member on the show, I do like her and I like her honesty and her transparency about what she's doing. And quite frankly, she doesn't always come off to me, even though I know for some may disagree. And for some of the ladies, they've had conversations about this over the years. I don't always think of it that she's coming off as bragging. And here's the reason why I feel that way. Because I think that when you are listening to her, sometimes she's actually giving you a bit of an education in the process of how her and her husband have gone about doing what they do to get into, you know, kind of that real estate game, if you you will. So yes, it can come across a little bit like, okay, Heather, we know you got this, 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 this. But at the same time, if you take that out of it and just kind of pay attention to some things that she's sharing in those conversations, um, you might get some education out of it and it may help you to start off, you know, certain things that you want to do for your situation. So um, I do appreciate that for that. And I appreciate her being transparent about that. She's transparent about her kids, her family, the things that they're doing. And, you know, right now they are empty nesters, right? Pretty much all the children are, um, I will, I think all of the three of them are in college right now and one is about to go to college. I think it's how that lineup is. And so, you know, they're into nesting and they had sold their home in um, Laguna Beach, but they got in a condo in LA. So we saw them with that at the end off from last season. Well, apparently they've gotten two other properties, one in, I think it's Balboa and also in Beverly Hills. So I was kind of wondering with her being in Beverly Hills, is it a possibility that in a season or two that she may switch over? Because you know, there is a lot of cross feed between housewives at you know different times. Now, I do believe that there was a question about that that was presented to Heather prior and Heather had shared that she wasn't looking to leave Orange County, that she was gonna stay there because they still have you know their businesses and things that they do there as well. And I believe the practice for her husband is there, but I think he, probably goes back and forth. I'm not 100% sure on that, but, you know, because things change all the time, but we definitely know he has a huge presence in LA. Um, so they've got a home in Beverly Hills. So we'll see if there's going to be a cross feed across at some point. I think that there might be, even if it's guesting between Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Orange County, um, because they did have one other lady, and I can't think of her name right now, just draws a blank. Um, Taylor, that's it. Taylor, who used to originally be on the cast for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, she did her crossover, I believe it was not, was it last season or the season before? Because ah, she didn't stay long. It might have been last season. And I think she might do a season and a half or something like that, but she's not doing it now. And uh, yeah, she did the cross feed, but she has since left Beverly Hills some years ago. So. If you're familiar with that franchise, you'll you know who I'm referring to. Um, so I see that it's a matter of time, right? So then we also then move forward. Oh, just also to mention, one of the things that was great about Heather's situation, she explained that the home that they have in Beverly Hills are basically going to tear it down to the studs because we know Heather is really good at doing a makeover, right? <laughs> She's been doing it after the last few homes, I think, that um, they have lived in and that has been showcased on the show so yeah she is going to be remodeling you see the 
individuals, contractors coming in for different areas to, to do that. And they seem to be really just, you know, doing okay here and her husband. So I'm glad about that. Um, they did get another home in Babo, which is closer to her husband's um, work, as well as to his mother. So that was really nice to see, you know, trying to keep everybody happy. And they seem to be doing good. You know, one thing I will say about Heather and her husband is they really do well together in partnership very well. I think that's something to be inspired by, how they work together, how they just kind of, you know, ebb and flow. And I, I really enjoy their relationship and, and and what they do share in that. So then we're moving on to Jen and Tamara and Emily. They are going to, um, they're actually working out, which is nice. And Emily has shared that she's lost 40 pounds, I think, since the last season. She said it was a combination of Ozempic, working hard, and liposuction. I appreciate her transparency in that. Uh, she looks good. She looks good. Uh, her and Tamara and Jen, they're kind of working out, doing their thing. And of course, they do bring up the subject of Shannon and her DUI. Um, Tamara lets us know that she had actually had backed out of the Trace Amigos, which was like a live show that they were going to different cities to do what, I'm not sure. But um, it consisted of her, um, Tamara, uh, who was the other one? Um, Shannon, of course, and Vicki Goldenson. They're the three Trace Amigas. Every time they go to Mexico, you know, they got a whole thing. So um, apparently, Tamara had saw Shannon uh, dipping in some drinks and she was not pleased with that. She felt that, you know, look, our show that we do cover all that kind of stuff, you know, do alcohol, talk about alcohol, whatever the case may be, she didn't think it was appropriate or professional for Shannon to be trying to, you know, dip and do with the alcohol in her cup as she was looking around appearing to see if anybody's watching her. So she had bailed out of it. That really irritated her. And of course, she's very upset about Shannon and the DUI situation. She's like, you know, hey, look, you know, she basically she should have known better. And, uh, you know, she didn't understand why she did what she did. She's got, she needs help. She feels and that she needs to stop drinking. Pure point blank period, you know, really come to grips with what's the issue because she could have killed herself. She could have killed dog. She could have killed someone. So that's what um, Tamara is very upset. She said she's lost respect for her. And so that's where we see that that relationship is um, in at the point. Um, Shannon has shared throughout the first part of the show that she has, you know, some strained relationships with the ladies because of the situation. Some people she's um, been able to be in contact with and some she has not. And so as we see her situation with Tamara is not too good. It was a bit up and down and rocky last season as well because, you know, Tamara and Shannon had a very visible, visual, you know, however you want to say, um, spat that turned into a couple of years of so of just not speaking to each other, a lot of back and forth on social media. And just really, it was very actually heartbreaking to watch that from them too, because they had been so close with Vicky as well. Now, Vicky, she managed to stay, you know, kind of the in-between and really wanted those two ladies to get back together. There's a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of things that were said, but in a nutshell, if you've been watching over the last few seasons, one of the things about what Shannon and her situation is, when she goes through her situation, she goes through her situation. And therefore, she's not always available to other people. And it can become a very toxic type of connection with a friend where she's always the one with the problems, always needs your help, needs your help, needs your help. And it's never can be there fully as a friend. And this is the things that Tamara was sharing with her. So, of course, there's a lot of back and forth. But there was some form of reconciliation, but it was tenuous at best for last season. And as we see that it didn't get any better. And with the CUI, it really has just kind of put it at a stall, kind of a break moment for Tamara. So, and that's understandable. Um, so they are talking about that at this point. Tamara also shares that she apparently has been spending a lot of time between um, Orange County and Big Bear. So they got a home out there. Apparently the home, we got to see a little bit of a pick of that. It looks beautiful. I believe it throughout this season, there will be some time where they will go to Big Bear. So we'll get to see the home in full. So that'll be fun to see. Uh, then we move into the fact that Jen and Tamara, as I mentioned in my last video yesterday, um, that they are doing good at this point. We know that they had a lot of issues and very rocky relationship last season. Matter of fact, Tamara was the one that brought Jen onto the show. So that was a bit interesting to see how that fell apart. But it did. And there was a lot of issues because of Ryan, which is Jen's fiance. I believe he is. No, nope, not a fiance yet, but her boyfriend. Um, at the time and, you know, live in boyfriend, I think for the most part, because she's got several kids from her previous marriage, which in fact, she's not fully divorced out of yet. And they don't really care for him because he's a bit of a ladies man. So that was the issue from last season, but we've seen that they have been able to get together, talk, you know, um, Jen has shared that she knows 
what she's getting with Tamara and she knows where she stands. She knows what she's about. And they've gotten to a point where she's going to keep it easy breezy with her. And then it seems to be going okay for the moment. <laughs> So that is basically what sums up that first few moments of what's going on. So then we jump into the meaty part of the uh, actual episode, which is, again, Shannon's DUI, which is going to be a meaty part of a lot of the um, season. And I really do feel that Shannon is really going to be carrying this season on her back, <laughs> honestly, because there's a lot going on and a lot that's brewing and a lot's going to be coming up. So She's not going to be the only one, but she's going to be definitely a, a front runner in this show. So she basically is got herself a new rental. She's empty nesting. Rental looks nice from what we've seen thus far. She's very, very, um, you know, saddened by the events of the DUI and the effects of the situation with her daughter. So she has a very nice conversation with her daughters. They talk about everything. She basically apologizes for what she's done. She says, you know, there's all these things in my life that I have not done, not experienced, I'm not experienced broken bones. I haven't experienced a DUI. I haven't experienced being arrested. Now I did all these in like 10 minutes. Um, if you can also recall in part of that uh, montage in the beginning, we see that there's a moment in that where Shannon and Heather actually are together and Shannon is sharing the pictures and the photos of what she looked like that night with Heather and they really did look gnarly. I mean, she, you know, she had blood on her face. So it was awful. I mean, it was obviously a bad accident. And uh, yeah, it was quite a bit to see in a very sightly situation before. So she's talking about that. The daughters, of course, they love their mother, right? They know their mother's been through so much. But one thing about Shannon is she loves her girls. She loves her girls. She's there for them 100%. They know it from off to bottom and so they being older now and being uh in college and you know just being just so mature and very really i'll be honest with you very just even killed you know through everything that they've had to uh deal with you know through the ups and downs the swings back and forth the divorce and everything and they're just very very well-rounded ladies as it seems that they are and they're very um you know uh up there for their mother they're supporting her they appreciate that she's taking responsibility they appreciate her transparency and they also appreciate the fact that she is basically owning up to what she did and knows that what she did was wrong and she's making strides to make it better and to do better and i appreciate that because it didn't come from a place even from the dogs because of course you know with your your parents you don't want to ever feel you're coming down on them right you know but at the end of the day what shannon did was extremely dangerous uh, let, let alone elite and the fact that, you know, they're able to kind of just say, you know, she can have that conversation with her girls and it be this very mature and understanding and enlightened conversation. I think it was such a benefit for everyone to see that. And I think it was definitely a benefit for Shannon to see that. Um, Shannon, you know, she feels very heartbroken about the fact that for two of the daughters, she was able to take them to college and be with them. And for one of them, she could not, this husband, her ex-husband, David, their father had to do it. And she couldn't be there because of the shenanigans of John. And then of course we go into talking about about her relationship with John, it's clear that the girls are not at all interested in dealing with John. I think they're very happy that he's no longer in their life. Um, it seems like John appeared to be a very toxic situation, an entity in their life. And I would have to agree with from what I see I felt that same thing too. I didn't feel like there was anything there that would make me think that he was this supporting situation that shannon really needed um that's my thoughts let me know yours in the comment section so for sure um they're very happy that she has gotten him out of her life and as she's moved on she is sharing that she is very happy he's no longer in her life we do hear the last time that they had spoke shannon and john she says was 10 days after the incident where he basically called her and said he didn't want anything to do with her he wanted her out of her life he felt that she was an embarrassment and that was that and basically because of all of the fanfare of her life which is quite interesting that he felt that way that this is representative of the fanfare of her life you know being the verbal levity and all but yet he goes and gets with alexis so you know that doesn't make a lot of sense to me but we shall carry on. Um, so they do go through that. It's really um, beneficial for Shannon to, you know, have this information um, and share the information with her daughters and get their feeling, their thoughts, so she can move forward as well and continue healing because she is very, very determined to do better and be better. 
and monitor herself in a real way. We'll see how that goes. I wish her the best in that for sure. Um, of course, we talked about the daughters being in uh, USC, I think like in a broad type program. So one of her daughters has been like in nine different countries or something like that, or yeah, I think it's nine different countries since so many months. And so she's just living her best life. And then you have one that's still at Baylor that's probably graduated or getting ready to, and then the other one is in New York. So all three of the girls are in three different places. Um, one being in the, I believe, Amar Otter of Shannon. So she did keep one in the state. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she basically did all of that and that worked out really nicely. Um, then we definitely go back into the Tamara and Jen Emily portion of them discussing the DUI course on uh, of Tamara in the gym and you know all the things that I shared about the respect value that is now lacking for Tamara um, in this situation. I hope that they do find a way to kind of you know get back together again, but we'll see as time goes on. Um, then Shannon also in the conversation talks more about John. She also talks about Alexis as well, John and Alexis that is, and how, of course, I can just mention about how he had an issue with her being all over the place, but yet you seem to not have the issues splashing this new relationship with Alexis all over the internet, I guess. So that was a bit of a bone of contention. But, you know, at the end of the day, like she said, you know, Alexis is more than welcome to her sloppy seconds. So, um, we talked a little bit more about the 10 days. That was the last time that they spoke. Um, yeah. And, uh, at the end of the day, she is happy with, um, moving forward with her life, but she does have a bone of contention with Alexis much more explained than I think the issue with John at this point, although that is a layered factor. Um, but it is about the lawsuit that Jim Bellino, which is Alexis Bellino's ex-husband, who, if you recall, when Alexis was first on RHOC some years ago, that's who she was married to. They have now since been divorced for quite some time now. And at the time of this, and we'll find this out later on in the episode, at the time of the lawsuit that was alleged a few years ago or levied against Tamara and Shannon by Jim for defamation, uh, Alexis shares that they had been divorced for six months. But Shannon feels that Alexis is part of that um, lawsuit because of a cease and desist that came from Alexis. That's what she is alleging. And um, also, the, you know, to the point that she's sharing is she was with John at the time all this was going on. So, you know, it's just a obviously very messy situation. So we'll get into that a little bit later as well. Um, so then we're moving on to Heather and her husband, again, talking about their homes and everything and just, you know, just is speaking on the things that they're going to be doing with the, the house in Beverly Hills and, uh, you know, just how they're uh, going to be working things about. Now, and what quite is interesting to me is that I'm wondering where exactly is... Heather residing at when she's filming for Orange County, because if I'm not mistaken, I think Orange County is about like 45 minutes to an hour drive to LA. So it seems like it would be out the way. I guess we'll get more in that. If you recall, if she was doing something temporarily in Orange County or not, let me know. But I only recall the three homes and I'm not really sure what Boa is, although I kind of reflectively remember a, a, a sign for it, but I can't really place that for myself because it's been a few years since I visited LA. So. Um, but if you um, pop that, let me know below, because I was just thinking about that later on, like, what? <laughs> um, so, yeah, they talk about that. And also one of the big things that we were um, that's been discussed during that conversation outside of the homes and everything, they seem to be very happy about everything, is that she's going to do the first event, basically, of the season with for each one, right? And there is good for a party. So she is doing um, a New Year's, because that's the time frame that we're in now for them on the taping of the show, a New Year's New Me brunch. And she wants to invite all the ladies. Now, Heather is very close with Alexis, you know, because of course, Heather's been back and forth on the show as well. And Heather and Alexis have been cool from years ago. So that's a bit of a um, issue because Heather has an off and on friendship with Shannon as well. So we'll see how all those things uh, come about. Um, then we move on to Emily and uh, Gina. Emily apparently is 
um, renovating her home and she is sharing that it's been some time and her house was stuck in the 90s or kitchen at least just like Shane's clothing. Um, so they are getting that stuff together. And um, so that was good for her. Uh, Gina comes over, they speak and they you know, seem to be in very good spirits, but Gina wants to talk to her even more in depth about the situation with her and Shannon. They talk about that. Uh, she shares her feelings about what took place. Of course, she lets us know she's not. Um, you know, really good with Shannon at all. Her and Shannon have not really talked much because again, uh, Shannon did a lot of kind of, you know, I told you so, and this is what I did for you and kind of nitpicked at her about her DUI situation. And so of course um, that has caused a, a huge rift, not to mention also that uh, Gina did a lot of really trying to open up that conversation in regards to John and Shannon last season. And that really blew up in front of their face. So that is also a contributing factor to why they are not friends at this time. Um, but I think that that time may change possibly. So um, as they further talk about, you know, their feelings about that, Emily asks, you know, hey, do you think that she should have went to uh, rehab? And Gina says, yeah, I do. Because we do know that Shannon has gone to some type of a retreat or some sort, um, but they feel like she should have went to rehab. So we'll see how much more conversation is surrounding that aspect. Um, then once they get to that point, they do move forward where Gina talks to um, Emily, of course, she's, you know, feeling and looking a, a very bothered and, and is like, what's going on? You know, let me know what's up, you know, because Emily's always there. That's her ride or die girl. And she basically shares about her situation with Travis. And I didn't know that her and Travis had a situation because Gina and Travis, they had been dating for a very long time. They actually both have three children apiece and they live together in their town home. So it's six kids. Um, she has her kids I think almost well, most of the time. Um, and then of course he has his children um, through the custody aspect that he has with his first wife. Now there apparently is some issues brewing in that relationship, not because of Travis Gina shares, but because of his ex. Now we have never seen his ex on the show. She's never been featured on the show to my knowledge, but apparently there's some issues there. Um, and, and as far as Gina's perspective is, is that, you know, she's, basically just making trouble. So of course, I'm going to say all things alleged because I don't know this woman or anything about it, but this is what we're being shared in the show. So at this point, um, apparently it has caused enough of a ruffle of a situation that, you know, Gina feels like the family needs to expand out of the townhome that they live in. Now, if you recall, Gina and Travis are Beliefs still working hand in hand as realtors because they became realtors last season. They passed their test and they are actively doing um, realty. So um, I don't know if that's going to mess up that professional aspect of things, but I guess we'll learn more as the season continues on. But one of the things that is very clear to uh, Gina is that you know she needs more space for her and the children. The kids are getting bigger now. Of course, when they both got together, the kids were quite small, everybody's getting larger, the ones but so big, big, you know, they got the kids through, through a room and, you know, they need their space and she's very aware of that and she feels that that's the best decision. She doesn't want to separate the situation with Travis, but there's a lot of uh, angst in regards to his ex situation, which is affecting their relationship. Part in, well, that when they looked to find a home for all of them to live in, it was beyond their means. So at this point, because she needs to make that leap um, for her and her children, she is looking to go in it alone to get a home and her and traps no longer cohabitate. And so that is a um, very sad uh, situation that they are now in. Um, Gina is visibly upset about that. She, it's not something she really wants to do, but she feels it's something she has to do. Uh, Emily is very caring and conversation with her and asking her how she feels about it. And, you know, at the end of the day, how Emily takes the situation as she feels that Gina feels that, you know, is it a situation that I'm outgrowing the, you know, circumstances or am I outgrowing Travis? And I don't know if Gina necessarily is outgrowing Travis because from what I understand, Travis is a great person. Travis was with Gina throughout her whole shenanigans with her ex-husband, Matt, who we um, know of. He was on the show a little bit, but I think the marriage was probably on someone on the rocks at the time that Gina and Matt and the family had entered into the show. And he also has some uh, issues with domestic violence that occurred between Gina and Matt, and he's had since dealt with that situation. 
Dina and Matt have come together. They are fully divorced, but they have now come together. They apparently co-parent well. They get along. Uh, Matt had a, a, a girlfriend. I don't know if he's still with her, um, but this was like about a season and a half or so ago. to show that they were all co-parenting, you know, adequately. Um, it's clear that Gina is totally over Matt and it's fine because the issue with Gina and Matt was his infidelity issue. So they tried to reconcile as she may recall, but that was not going anywhere. So she decided to move forward. She had gotten with Travis at the same time and Travis has been pretty much a knight in shining armor. He's been there for her anytime she needed anything. She was definitely that person. We know that last season that Heather and, and Gina had a bit of a tiff because Heather had felt that, you know, Gina was probably relying too much on Travis as being a sounding board to the situation with Matt because she's kind of looking at it from like, you know, I don't think he's going to want to hear you talking so much about this man or another man when you're clearly divorced and everything should be over. So I think they've gotten over that at this point. Um, and I think that it just kind of left where Heather wasn't going to go into deviling into her opinions regarding that anymore. And it seems like Shannon has pulled up from it, but at, or not, excuse me, not Shannon, but Gina's pulled up from it. But at the same time, here she is now doing something to separate them, which could cause a, a ripple effect and consequences of a relationship breaking up. Yet this man has been with you throughout all of this situation and he didn't have to do that. And so it can come and I think she feels some guilt of feeling like, you know, maybe she's kind of abandoning the situation and she does not want them to break up, but she feels that she needs to make this move to have that separate home for her and her kids because it's the right thing to do. Uh, so I'd love to know your thoughts about that. Do you feel that Gina is making the right decision? Do you think that, you know, if it was you, maybe you would do something different? Do you feel like Gina is abandoning the relationship? Do you think that it's a sensible decision? You know, write those, uh, share those in the comment section. I would really love to know your thoughts because I think that there's probably some mixed bag on that as far as how people feel on that. Me personally, I understand what Gina is doing and trying to do. I knew at some point, and I think it is kind of just practicality and logic associated with the fact that that townhome is just too small for the six kids and the two adults. And these kids were small at that on and as they get bigger they're going to need more room and more space in that town does not look that big so eventually this is what we're going to get to the issue i feel is that where's travis and how is he in dealing with closing up the situation with his ex-wife we don't have a lot of details about that i don't know how much we will learn obviously throughout the season but i do hope that they do find some way to wrap that up because I do would not want to see Gina and Travis end because um, I think that he's good for her and I think that she's good for him. So we'll see how that goes. But Travis, you know, very much um, shares his thoughts as well about the situation. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, um, again, she's doing a really good job of talking to her about this. And it seems like it may be the same night that we flipped to Jen and Ryan. And of course, Jen and Ryan, you know, they they famously have <laughs> an interesting way of getting together. Jen is a new housewife from last season. It's now was a friend of to Tamara and came on the show. Um, and Tamara and her, you know, they had their outs and they seem to be good now. Now the issue that Jen is dealing with is that Jen is not fully divorced. She's separated from her ex-husband. And what has happened is that apparently her ex-husband, because Jen's family is the one with the money and he worked for the family. Well, he had left Jen, had left Will, it's his name, um, because she wasn't satisfied in the marriage anymore. They have several kids and it was a big to-do her family was not happy with her. And, you know, she did try to stay in a co-parenting friendly situation with Will, but they had not fully divorced. She had then jumped into the relationship with Ryan. She's been living with Ryan. Ryan is considered or has been considered or talked about as being a little bit of a ladies' man, but he is assuring her that he's with her 100 percent and he's being faithful 100 percent Now, at this same time, Jen has um was in a home that Will was paying the lion's share, she stated, of the home, which means the majority of the rent for that home that they, she was living in because they need to separate things out. Well, apparently over time, things have really deteriorated. Her divorce has stalled. They have not come to any real agreement and Will is having a hard time or taking a lengthy time on sharing the financials. Now, remembering that Will worked for her family, well, apparently he no longer does. Now, for what it shared, was shared by Jen in last season is that her family pretty much sided with Will and felt horrible about Jen leaving the marriage because they really liked Will. 
So it was going to be pretty tricky to see how Will would continue to work for the family. So clearly we've got our answer that he does not. And so therefore he's also not being able to pay the amount that he paid for the rent. And she nowhere near has that amount of money to cover the rent in a home over there in Orange County. And like she shares, she only get $50 a session for her yoga studio session. So that money is not coming in and bringing in what needs to be in order for her to continue to for. Now she's obviously very, very concerned about this. She talks about it with Ryan over dinner. Ryan basically says, look, why don't you move in with me? We something we're going to be doing anyways. I think Ryan and Jen have been together for two plus years. And so he's thinking like, you know, why don't we just kind of move together? Of course, Jen naturally is very cautious of that. She doesn't have a ring, right? She's not even out of the marriage that she was in. And she doesn't want to have to do again an uproot for her children because what if things don't work out with Ryan? Because again, they had a tumultuous relationship situation in last season. And Ryan says, why well, instead of looking at basically that cup is um, half empty, why don't you look at it as being half full? And we were going to do this anyways. We we're just going to, you know, it's a lot easier to do this. It's definitely um, the easiest solution. So why don't you just do it? It appears at the end that Jen is kind of brought along with the idea. Okay. You know, if you really are in on this, you're really for it. Let's do it. So that's where we end off with that. Um, and then we move on to Heather and Emily and Alexis's uh, time. Now, they are interesting uh, to say the least. Um, Heather and Emily and Alexis is, uh, whew, I tell you. <laughs> This meeting is one that was definitely needed. Of course, they're going to be talking about Shannon. Um, Alexis and Emily, I guess, have never met, but they're obviously familiar with each other. Now, Emily, for one, even though her and Shannon have a bit of a rocky relationship at times from season to season, it can go either way. I do feel like there was some sense of loyalty that she showed to Shannon at this uh, get together. And I was happy to see that. Heather, of course, doesn't know where she stands from day to day for Shannon. So she's still friends with Alexis. She loves Alexis. And so therefore, you know, she's kind of letting her her um, feelings known. Now, I feel like Alexis came in. She seems, you know, Alexis is one of those people to me that she has a, a disposition that allows you to think that she's going to be friendly, but she's very biting. And I don't know if I trust her so much. I do believe that she was like, you know, uh, pow pow's a blazing. I feel like she was ready for a fight. Um, even if there wasn't one, I really do feel she was literally ready to um, windmill herself over John. Now, her and John have not been together that long during this time frame. So Emily even corpses with the fact that I think I know John better than she does, but I digress. Um, so basically, Emily um, and Heather are already at the uh, restaurant. Alexis comes in, does a little meet and greet, and then they kind of get into it. Now they talk about John because that's the topic of the situation. They talk about the fact that um, uh, Heather's New Year's Eve, New Year, New Year's, New Me party is coming up. And that, you know, look, she invited Alexis, but she's now the a-hole because of Shannon. Um, and she didn't know how she became that way because bottom line, she's not going to end that relationship with Alexis is what we're hearing. And she did contact Shannon didn't do a text she wanted to make sure that she had talked to Shannon and let her know that she's having the party she was inviting her she wanted to invite everybody she knows that Shannon's going through things she doesn't want Shannon to feel left out Shannon says I'll let you know and then leaves it at that but as we know later on Shannon does go to that party and I'm glad that she did so now um you know of course Emily has questions Emily's always the inquisitive one she asks questions about the situation with Alexis and John and you know Alexis basically just gives the flowery version of how they got together, about the quiet woman that always seems to be brought up all the time. She says that the old girl does not own the quiet woman. This is where John and her met. Um, they kind of hit it off. You know, the heart wants what the heart wants. And there we have it. Um, so, you know, and was like, okay, fine. I mean, it is what it is. Because at the end of the day, Emily thinks that John is a douche anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, but she does, Alexis does make a point to bring up a, a situation that was referenced also by kind of a flashback um, of an issue between 
uh, something that Emily had shared about or said in regards to Juan, and she's kind of wants to get to the bottom of that because apparently Emily did this or said these things about whatever this altercation, verbal altercation was on a podcast. And so she wanted to address that because it hurt her feelings. This is Alexis. Her feelings were now hurt. And she's like, you know, look, you know, and Emily's not the one to play with either. I mean, I know Alexis wants to come in like she's hot on fire, hot to trot, you know, but uh, Emily ain't the one to play with either. Um, so um, at the end of the day, you know, I Emily it could, could have that girl run in circles. Okay. That, that's just how I feel about that. But that's my opinion, my thoughts. Um, so, you know, she basically shares how she feels, you know, you know, a little upset that basically that, you know, you were kind of getting information on what was being said to you um, because it basically was false, right? Because whatever Alexis believes or feels, it's going to be whatever John tells her, okay? She has no alliances to Shannon and she's going to do whatever her man says or believes, whether it's really true or not. We know this is how it is. So, you know, she is windmilling for this man. He hasn't even made a single um other than <laughs> i would say single cameo other than that flashback but he's not made a current cameo and here we got these women fighting over this man it's ridiculous and mostly alexis women fighting and so you know she just wants to know like you know you basically trust a drunk you know then over him well of course she's going to trust shannon over him because she doesn't have a relationship with John, right? Emily basically lets her know, look, Shannon, I had to listen for the last three years that he doesn't pay his no money. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. So this is what we have. Shannon is Emily's friend. She's not friends with John and she thinks John's a douche. So it doesn't matter anyways. So they get it kind of cleared up somewhat, I guess. Alexis basically just, you know, just saying that whatever was presented wasn't true. Emily doesn't care. <laughs> she just doesn't care. But like I tell you, when Alexis walked in there, though, boy, she was just, she was ready to go. And I honestly, she was so excited to hard launch this relationship with John. Okay, she was there front and center. She is going to be the victor of this situation. He has let that be known. She's going to be his fighter. She is his protector. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous, but it makes for good TV. So <laughs> we will stay tuned. Um. So of course, um, remember I told you Lexus thinks she's cute. Um, and she, you know, this little coin of calling him Johnny J as far as a rebranding. And Heather's like, <laughs> oh, that's so great. I think it's so wonderful. It's the best rebrand that I've heard since Romeo to be an Aoli and, and whatever. So, you know, at the end of the day, I just was like, okay, we'll see how all this goes and how this um, wraps up. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at with that. Um, and I guess the dinner continues on. Now we do then move forward into Shannon talking to her lawyer. And um, I thought that was really interesting to hear the parameters that were associated around the DUI itself. She has a very good uh, conversation with her lawyer. Her lawyer basically, you know, lays out the fact that, you know, she has three years probation. Um, and if she completes the probation with no issues, um, she'll be able to go back to court and um, undo the no contest that she placed as a plea and go in as a plea for not guilty to get the case dismissed. Now, Shannon is like, look, I don't want any special treatment. I did wrong and I don't want to have an issue or make it like you're trying to do something for me because I deserve to go through the consequence of my action. And he then the lawyer shares with him, you know, anyone would have the opportunity to do what I am sharing with you to do. So it's not about you getting special privileges. So that's one thing. Um, she also shares, Shannon does, that part of the uh, situation in addition to the three years probation is that the court had her sign um, up for a alcohol school. That's like a nine month stint. And she also is doing 40 hours of community service at her church, which she absolutely loves. And uh, she feels that she, her goal right now is just to continue to grow. And if you watch Watch What Happens Live, which I love Watch What Happens Live, and I did watch because it was very, very riveting. It was very, very good. Um, she, it was extra information that was provided about these things in specific. But Shannon basically says she's continued on with that um, uh, time frame um, with the church doing her community service because she absolutely loves it. And I love that for her. So um, yeah, that basically shares about that. Um, so now we are moving on. Uh, we see that Tamara is um, 
basically able now to have Sophia, who has been living with her, and we find out for the last 10 years, um, actually film again. We haven't seen Sophia since she was eight. Um, and that's because Simon, um, Tamara's ex-husband, had refused to sign the paperwork to allow uh, Sophia to film. And so that is definitely caused quite the rift for that situation. But we get to know that Sophia has been living with Tamara the entire time. So I'm glad for that because Tamara does have a very conflicted um, and very uh, challenging and difficult relationship with her other daughter, Sydney, who she was also close with. Because she was close with, you know, and, and look, Tamara's close with her kids for the most part. And she says she's close with Sophia. She absolutely loves Sophia. She adores Sophia. Sophia is actually about 18 years old now. And she's getting ready to go off to college. That's good. She does need to have quite a bit of wit about her. And I do like the banter between Tamara and her daughter, Sophia. Um, she's a very saddened about Sydney. Sydney apparently has taken sides with Simon. And it's unfortunate that this is, you know, happening. Um, we do um, get a flashback with Tamara and about a couple of... Uh, maybe two or three now um, reunions ago where she had shared that Sydney was living with her, but that Sydney was upset and had decided to tell Tamara she was moving out and was going back to her father's because she felt that Tamara had ruined um, her father's life um, through the divorce, which you know Tamara famously set up and started many, many years on RHOC if you watched it. And I do remember it very well. Um, and quite frankly, you know, her and Simon, they ran their course. So it's unfortunate that the children are split in this situation, uh, at least that Sydney is. I hope that there is some form of reconciliation and therapy that will happen along the way, because um, I would hate for her to continue to miss out on the opportunity of having her mother in her day, everyday life. Um, you know, this is the sad part about situations where children are privy too much to things that are going on in adult lives, because you don't always know all of the story. And I don't know all of what Simon may or may not be doing, because we haven't seen Simon since the divorce situation so many years ago. Um, um, but it's just not good. It's not good at all. Um, but I do recall that back at that time, Simon did get himself a, a real young girl, like really quick. So how much his life was ruined, I don't know. But, you know, obviously that's what um, Sydney feels. So she is estranged from Tamara. Tamara's very upset about that, of course, but she's still being present for her other children as well. Her and her daughter decide to have some mother daughter time. They go get tattoos. Tamara shares how she is cool with the tattoo thing because all the kids have them. She's all about self expression. Whereas at one point she was concerned before when the, her sons got them because, you know, we're in different times now, but she's cool with it now. She herself even says she wants to get herself a tattoo with the angel number 111. And part of what she does with the angel number, she prays whenever she sees that number in order for reconciliation with Sydney. Of course, Sophia doesn't really want to have much conversation about it. She doesn't want to talk about it. I think Tamara does respect that. Sophia also pours back, you know, you got to keep these things to yourself because I'm not your therapist. You know, I'm not your therapist. And they kind of laugh about it, but Sophia's not playing with her. And I agree with Sophia because at the end of the day, you know, this is her issue and she doesn't need to be involved with that. And so I think that that was great that, you know, Tamara recognized that as well because that is something that can be quite a generational traumatic issue when you drag the children into the mess of other situations in the family and especially through the marriage element um it just never goes never works out so that's where we're at i don't know if sophia and and simon are um what their relationship is we're not privy to that at this point we may not get privy to it but i do like that sophia and um Tamara are doing good. Uh, so then we move on to um, Travis and Gina and their conversation. Gina does talk to Travis, lets him know that, yeah, it's probably a good idea for us to make the move. Travis is not happy about it. He um, lets it be known that, you know, we'll see how things go. He doesn't have a crystal ball, but hopefully we'll be okay. We'll be positive about it. He has heard about it. He acknowledges that it's something that needs to be done. He acknowledges the space that's needed, but he's not looking forward to them being separated and not being uh, together under the same roof. They did have a very emotional moment about that. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, like you said, we have really over the few years have put together this nucleus family here that's really working and you can tell that he gets choked up and i really like travis myself um but you can tell he gets choked up and he's just really emotional about the situation he doesn't want to see this end um in this way but he's going to do his part and we'll see how things go as time goes on 
Um, and then we are then moving on to um, the day of the event for the New Year's New Year party, New Year's New Me party. We see the people, you know, ladies getting ready. Shannon basically getting ready with her uh, makeup artist and, and hairdresser. Uh, basically says, I'm not, you know, interested in any nastiness, but she's going to go to the party and she's, everyone gets to bring a plus one. So she's bringing a plus one. So I think that was good. Um, Alexis uh, and Emily are basically riding in the cart together. Um, Alexis, I think is like, like I said, she's ready to go. It's like she took, she drank a Red Bull and she got a battery pack, you know, wind up and she ready to go. She's going to defend her man, John, because they ain't no doubt about it. That her and John had a conversation before she left. But of course, she also wants to let us know that she had a sleepover with john so you know and of course that's the the fact that she and john are having you know relations what you do um so but that's what happened and that's great um alexis i think is just here or not alexis emily's just here for the for the party she really is because again we never know what their relationship is with her and uh shannon um then we get um excited news for gina because now we're entering katie on which is a new housewife and i already did a bit of a background for her in my last video so if you have not checked that video out take a look at that it's um so you can't miss it really uh, but it's the weekly roundup that is reality tv and you'll see her right on there and she says that she is here for the drama so <laughs> um that's what i put on there anyway on that thumbnail so she's there and uh yeah so we get to meet her and uh, gina's just super excited about the fact that um katie is there and part of the family now also katie um has met gina through sutton um, and Sutton is the one that basically gave her the, um, hey, go check her out as far as finding a place in Orange County because both Sutton and Katie are from Georgia originally and they met somewhere, I guess, in Beverly Hills. So that's how they have come about. And of course, she does like her. Katie feels that, you know, Gina has quite the zest for life and she appreciates that. Um, also in the car ride over between Alexis and Emily, Alexis is kind of crying a little bit, you know, because I think she's a little bit nervous or a little bit anxious about this. Of course, she's going to not show it in the sense of like, yeah, I'm really nervous about this, but you can tell she is. So she's trying to probe uh, Emily for how, you know, checking the temperature, if you will, of Shannon. And like Emily says, you know, you never know what version of Shannon you're going to get. So <laughs> you just have to wait and see like everybody else, I guess. Um, but I thought it was cute that she tried to pump her for information and i'm just like girl please <laughs> so then we're moving forward into uh, we're seeing heather kind of pitting around and getting things uh together for the party as well as welcoming guests that are coming in um she's in a beautiful blue dress and the, the party looks very festive it looks very fun heather is definitely in her element she does corp a little bit about emily you know all the complaints that emily had last year about the parties with all the monogram stuff well she's like you know there's no monograms here at this time um so that was kind of funny but you know she um, was lighthearted about it. Well, not so much last year, but they are this year. So I'm glad they reconciled that and moved on from that. Um, so um, basically what we do see that with the party, as lovely as it's laid out, is Gina ends up coming in with Katie and introduces her to Tam, uh, to Heather. Katie um, and her confessional lets it be known that, oh, I've met um, Heather before actually, but this is the first time she actually spoke to me. So I'm like, oh, here we go. I feel a little bit of a rumble going on there. But she was very gracious at the party itself and the greeting Heather was Katie. Um, and so uh, Gina lets us know that there's lots of stations um, at the party and those stations are those tarot reader cards and a wish table where you do wishes for people at the party even if you don't know them just do a good wish for somebody so there's a lot of stations there and as gina corpse about the fact that yeah you, you gotta be ready to work when you go to a heather to bro party um so we also get into a bit of the fact that not only is jen having issues with that um rental, you know, and really getting eviction uh, is, is on, on the table, I think, at this point, and the loss of rent. Well, it turns out that that home is one that Jen um, has been made aware of through Gina. Gina is the one that was able to vouch for um, Jen to get that rental. So she's kind of trying to uh, not do too much conversating with her because what is she supposed to say, you know, about this? And she also feels bad because she's the one that, you know, um, gave her as a reference, but you know, it is what it is. So, um, but that's what's going on there. Um, then we um, see also when Jen comes into the party, that it is a bit of an awkward moment, but she does have one. 
the Tamara does arrive. She gets automatically a run in her nylon due to Gina. Um, so that was kind of cute. And Tamara, you know, she seems like she's pretty much relaxed. One point that was made that I appreciated from Eddie, her husband, when they were getting ready is that she was letting him know everybody was there. And he's like, you know, look, basically, you know, keep yourself firm with Shannon because that was a toxic situation. And he said for Alexis, I wouldn't trust her. And I agree with him. I think it's definitely trust and verify total situation when it comes to Alexis. Because Alexis and Tamara do not have a good relationship. They never have. They've never really cared for each other. Um, however, they did share, Tamara did share, that they did have reconciled at one of the most recent RoboCons. They talked and I guess now that they're cool, we'll see what happens as time goes on. Um, it's... Oh, there's also a bit of a comment made in regards to the drinking concept because Emily and Pam are talking about Shannon and the drinking and, you know, and how she's kind of, you know, getting herself together and all this kind of stuff. Because Shannon, you know, she's going to just be used to the fact that she's the talk of the conversation everywhere. Um, and in Tamara, you know, Emily shares with Tamara that, yeah, she says she's got two min drink minimum. And Tamara says, what, an hour? So, you know, obviously Tamara's not here for anything unless she sees it in full form. And, you know, we'll see what happens with that. Um, Shannon does finally arrive with her plus one looking great, I might add. I was very happy for the fact that, look, when you're in those type of situations, you make sure you look your best because that will help with your confidence. And I think it did just that. Shannon had the right amount of anxiety, not too over the top, but she was ready to go. And she knew that she was on a mission to also have a conversation with Alexis because if she's going to be here and part of the girls group, that she's going to need to have that conversation and get the elephant out of the room. She also knows that her relationships with the other ladies are a little up and down and she doesn't know where she stands with each one. So she's you know going to tread in lightly. So she gets in the first person she does talk to for the most part, other than the um, hellos with Heather is Gina, which I think was a good person to kind of slide in with. Um, and, you know, Gina basically says, like, you know, even no matter how I feel about Shannon, I still, you know, feel sorry for her. I, I, I feel protective over her. I feel I care for her because they did have a relationship. Shannon acknowledges that, yeah, they were really close and she clearly wants that relationship back. Um, and she also further apologizes, fully on apologize for everything she said, anything she said to hurt her. Gina is like, what? You know, and that automatically starts to break down those walls. And I'm glad for that because, you know, let's just get past that. And please don't say anything else about CPS. <laughs> so, um, they seem to be, you know, okay. And and Gina's kind of, you know, okay, all right. Well, I'm, I'm here with it. I'm here with it. Of course, Emily is being her fun, bubbly self in the situation. Um, and she's like trying to, you know, hey, 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 how are we doing? Are we doing good? Are we here? You know, she needs to figure out which version that they're dealing with. And I laugh because Gina says, look, she has so many versions, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. She just wants this version of Shannon to stay. Because, you know, she's very calm, cool, and collective. And I would agree. Um, so, yeah, so that's how that role up so now we are moving into really the grand finale situation um you know we see that kate is katie is meeting people and she seems very lovely i think she's gonna be a great housewife thus far we'll see it's just the first episode but so far i like her i hope that this i don't change her mind as time goes on but we'll see how that goes now she has not met tamara yet and this is funny because how she meets tamara is that well of course as gina and sharon shannon are talking shannon spots alexis in the horizon and says you know look i think i'm gonna just go ahead and go ahead and talk to her and let's just get this thing together get this elephant out of the room and you know shannon and gina's like oh, oh okay all right yeah all right let's okay hey, you good all right you know um so yeah nothing to it just do it right nothing to it but to do it so she goes over there and comes up to alexis alexis is talking to katie about the wish table and then she happens to kind of zone in and pay attention to Shannon being there. Shannon asks if they can speak. She says, oh, hi, hey, okay, yeah, sure. And she asks if they can go in outside of the party, into the outside. Of course, the ladies want to know what's going on, right? They want to see. So Heather, in her funny way, and this is what I love about the housewives when they are just comical with each other. You know, she looks at Tara, she goes, is this a problem if we look and we listen in or you know, basically eavesdrop? <laughs> so everybody's running to the window while the two ladies go out, Shannon and Alexis. And again, Alexis, like I said, she was ready to go. Do, 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 do. Buster Douglas, she was ready to go. So they get outside. Um, Shannon basically, you know, starts the conversation. And what she goes into is not so much the issue with John and herself in this 
triangle thing happening, which is not really a triangle. She goes into the lawsuit situation, the defamation lawsuit that Jim, that I shared earlier, had filed. So in a nutshell, Alexis is not having it. She is upset about that. As if you would have seen, she was just livid. She said, this is not what the issue is. The issue is that you're upset that I got your man, basically what she said. She also says that I had nothing to do with that cease and desist. Show me the documentation. Shannon says, oh, you don't recall that she sent me the cease and desist? Because at the end of the day, you're the one that started this off. So I feel that you're part of this situation. And again, John was with me during this time. So he knows the English I went through. I left lost out of money. I had to pay $300,000 to defend myself for things that I didn't do. And Tamara, by the way, says that, yeah, she had a conversation with Alexis sometime after, I guess, the lawsuit situation. Alexis told her she had nothing to do with it and did not agree with it. And so Tamara took her out of word, but Tamara ended up having to pay $500,000 and they can't really talk much about that else, you know, beyond that. So at the end of the day, you know, he made out with quite a bit of money, almost a million dollars. Now, Shannon wants her money. <laughs> That's the bottom line. You know, Alexis says, look, you need to get over it. It's done. The case is closed. I had nothing to do with it. It's over with. I'm not talking about it. I'm not dealing with it. She says, look here, it ain't over for me, right? Because at the end of the day, I'm still out $300,000. You know how much money $300,000 is? Alexis said, I ain't here for it. The reason why you're upset is because I got your man. And that's that. And that is that. And that is that. And at the end of the day, like Alexis said, she ain't going to win this battle with John. No, 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 no. She ain't going to win this battle with John. I was like, Lord, have mercy. You would think this woman had been married to John for 15 years. You don't know every single thing that was going on. But my gosh, she is going in. And look, he's got a fighter in her. I will say this. She's got a fighter in her. So that is how things um really end off um basically she steps away from um shannon because she is done with it she's i ain't talking about it anymore it is over and by the way you know shannon says you know yeah since you want to bring up the situation with john look i'm gonna let you know i am glad that he's out of my life i'm glad that he's you're with him and she says good and i'm glad that he left you and i'm like oh okay okay all right alexis all right i mean look let's just put it out there you ain't too far from that happening to you but i'm sure more will come as the season unfolds now what are the ladies doing while this is happening well they're all up on the glass as you can see in this picture here they're all trying to listen in here because you know emily says like i can read lips i can speak i can read spanish english and lips <laughs> and so everybody's trying to hear what's going on Tamara at that point says, oh, it's a, she knows it's Katie and, you know, they're introducing themselves. She says, yeah, I love being a new housewife during like an epic situation. Katie says, yeah, it's a lot going on here. So yeah, there is real cute. I'm saying, you know, you look beautiful by the way and da, 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 da and everything is good. Um, and then of course, as soon as they see that things are, because they're kind of giving us a little bit of play by play, you know, you know, Alexis isn't talking. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see the head going. Oh, yeah. You know, Shannon's, oh, oh, oh. And then once it looks like, well, obviously we know it's over because then the yelling is happening and mostly from Alexis because she's literally losing her shit as we see on here. And uh, she's like, look at here. Um, I ain't dealing with it. So as she's coming in, you know, Tamara's like, okay, we gotta, we gotta disperse, we gotta disperse, you know, disperse like cockroaches. It was really, really funny. <laughs> I really hope that we get more of that type of interaction with the ladies. I so hope we do because that was absolutely but me all the way to T. So are you watching? I mean, if you are, drop down your comments down below. If you did watch, tell me what you thought was funny, what were the parts. Talk about anything about the show. I, anything you want to share. I would love to conversate with you about it. It is so much in that uh, episode. I think that we got the best, I want to say, premiere that I can recall from RHOC in quite some time. I mean, I feel like we are here for the authentic storyline and I am happy and here for it. There's going to be more things coming down the pike. If you saw the run through that they did, where they tell you what's going to happen for the season, Jen and Ryan are going to have some explaining to do, I guess. Um, it's going to be serious. And I think there's going to be more to come with Travis and Gina and their situation. How do you feel about their situation? Do you think this was a sensible move? Do you think it was going to bound to happen? Let me know your thoughts. How do you feel about Tamara and Shannon? Do you think they're going to ever reconcile their relationship? Are they ever going to get on the same page? I don't know. But, you know, we'll see as time goes on, maybe through the things that Shannon will do uh, to hopefully effectively get herself better. She could find a way to patch up that relationship. They did have a really great relationship. Uh, Eddie, you know, he's not here for it, but we'll see if we can change Eddie's mind. Um, and what do you think about the situation with Ryan and Jen? And Jen in particular with her issue with the eviction of, and potentially eviction of the house. Um, 
with the not paying of rent and you know this is a serious situation how do you think she's going to um bend in this way uh, do you think that it's going to work out for her I would love to know your thoughts. There's a lot to go on. How do you think about Katie? I like her thus far, the new housewife. So let me know what you think about her so far. She seems sensible, but I kind of feel like something's going to happen between her and Heather. So I am here for it because I like Heather too. So, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes and hopefully we won't get too petty and it will be based off of some real situation because I hate the contrived stories. I like things that are authenticity. Even if you've got to go and reshoot something over and over again, that's fine. But I need the story to be a real thing and not some stupid you know made up thing just because you don't want to talk about what's really happening in the group so i think that about does it we have been talking for a little while here i didn't want this video to go too much longer but i did want to get in here and um you know we'll see now i will look to see depending on how much information is you know opens up and unveils from episode to episode if i'm going to split up the um recaps and reviews if you're cool with it being this length and just kind of going over it in one video fine if you like it to be separated into maybe parts let me know and i can uh, make some arrangements on that as well um some people like longer lengths some people like short lengths and i like either one myself i like you know variety myself so i understand um i um, i think we did really well though on all these highlights and you know sometimes some of the episodes it, it won't be as much of a playback either um so we'll just talk about what's the, the real issue and and so you know i think that's going to be a lot of what will to come because it's going to be some definitely situational issues happening so again i was so glad to be able to actually catch the show and do a recap review so quickly so i want to thank you for being here and i hope that you enjoyed the video and if you did and you enjoy housewives and you know the recap and review i hope that you will give me a like on the way out um you know it helps the algorithm helps for more people to you know get into the conversation about this show and um let's all share our thoughts and if you are new here and you haven't subscribed yet i hope that you will and become part of the family i would love to have you and thank you to all of you guys for your um viewing support it truly truly means a lot to me um i think this is going to probably be the only video for today that's going to drop but we'll see what happens but for sure make sure that you have your notification bell on with all um on it so that way you don't miss an upload i do have several videos that i dropped yesterday so if you haven't had the opportunity to listen to those or view those mother then make sure you take time and you know share me your thoughts on those as well in the comment section i would love to know so with that i think i'm going to do a do i'm excited for this season how about you if you you're not watching and you heard the recap review and it looks like it'll be interesting i think you should take it a watch i think they're going to surprise us um right now i think all bets are for this show at this point because with everything going on with the other ones rhop is you know also maybe a little bit of an issue uh salt lake is probably a little bit of an issue and we know roa has definitely got a little bit of an issue so rhoc right now seems to be where it's at beverly hills uh, i don't know yet they, they seem okay but i'm not sure you know how it goes right um but yeah with that being said i'm going to bid you to i hope you have a very nice day stay blessed stay safe and stay cool because i think it's gonna be another hot one today too and i will see you later bye